Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. We will sing several songs from Songs of Faith and Praise, the book we use here at Northfield. I'll give you the name of the song and the title. If perhaps you don't have that book, I have another one, or you can Google the song to sing along with us. I'll give you the time that you need. I know you're fast with your fingers. So the first song that we'll sing is number 483, <clears throat> Is It For Me? Is It For Me? Number 483. Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy rest? For me, the weak and sinful, oh, shall I be so blessed? Oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore. Is it for me thy welcome, thy gracious entering? For me so come ye blessed, for me so full of sin. O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. O oh, Savior, precious Savior, my heart is at Thy feet. I bless thee, and I love thee, and thee I long to meet. O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee, and love thee evermore. I'll be with thee forever and never grieve thee more. Dear Savior, I must praise thee and love thee evermore. Oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore. The next song we sing is number 771. 771. The title of this song is Lord Speak to Me. Lord, speak to me. 771. <clears throat> Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tongue. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and long. All strengthen me that while I stand firm on the rock and strong in thee. I may stretch out a loving hand to wrestlers with the troubles. 
teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things Thou dost impart, and wing my words that they may reach the hidden depths of men, Fill me with thy fullness, Lord, unto thy very heart or flow, in kindling thoughts and glowing word, thy love to tell, Thy praise to show. For the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 383. Jesus, keep me near the cross. 383. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain, in the cross, in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest me on the river near the cross a trembling soul and mercy found me there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever Till my rapture soul shall find Rest me on the river Near the cross, O Lamb of God Bring it scenes before me Help me walk from day to day With its shadow o'er me In the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Till my raptured soul shall find Rest me on the river We now take this opportunity as we have been instructed That on the first day of the week They gathered together to break bread uh, Christianity is a cross-centered religion Hence, the title of the song that we just sang is Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. It is on the cross that Jesus did uh, his job to save us from sin. It is at the cross that Jesus was willing to give up his physically body, physical body uh, to suffer 
not just the physical pain, but the emotional stress that he did as the people that he came to rejected him. And so let's just uh, keep our hearts on this cross-centered concept. And as we partake of the Lord's Supper, the two symbols that we have are symbols that happen because of what Jesus did on the cross. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that in your divine wisdom, that at just the right time you sent Jesus into the world, that you sent him into a sinful world. Even though we were not there at that time, uh, we can relate to that, that we are sinners and Jesus came because of us. As we partake of this bread, help us to remember his body racked in pain, the pain that he was willing to suffer for each one of us. Be with us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The song that we just sang said the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. Uh, we understand that uh, the Lord uh, indeed shed his beams on all of us. And the first verse says, free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. The blood that flowed from Jesus's body as a reminder to all of us that it is the blood that washes away our son, sins. It is the blood of our salvation. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that, willing, that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood, that our sins might be forgiven, that your grace may come upon us. And as we think of that, help us to lay our sins at your feet, knowing that through the blood that he shed, that they will be forgiven. Be with us as we partake this fruit of the vine. We pray it in his most precious name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being completed, we take this short amount of time to remember that we are also instructed on the first day to give back that which we have prospered that which we have prospered. We have come to understand that all that we have is the result of our God from above. And so it is uh, the deal of giving thee but thine own. And so as we give, help us to give with an open heart, help us to give with a cheerful heart, and help us indeed to understand that our giving is supposed to be a sacrifice just as in days of old, uh, the Israelites sacrificed, we are to sacrifice in our giving, giving back to the Lord that which is his, so that the church, uh, the Lord's kingdom here on earth, can strive and do the job it's supposed to do. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. Help us to do so with a generous heart. Help us to do so with a cheerful heart, knowing that we give back to our God that which came from him. Bless us in our giving. Help our church here in Northfield to utilize these monies to uh, further your work to help those in need. Uh, bless us as we give. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we'll sing is number 636. 636. To love someone <laughs> more dearly every day. Beautiful song. To love someone more dearly <coughs> every day. To love someone more dearly every day 
to help a wandering child to find his way to ponder over no thought and pray and smile when evening falls and smile when evening falls this is my task to follow truth as blind men long for night to do my best from dawn of day till night to keep my heart fit for his holy sight and answer when he calls and answer when he calls this is my task then my savior by and by to me when faith hath made her task on earth complete, and lay my homage at the Master's feet within the jasper walls, within the jasper walls, this is my task. I hope you enjoyed singing and praising the Lord as much as I did. And so we have a, a message, uh, just a few moments. Uh, hopefully, uh, some of the things I say will spur you on to uh, greater heights. Uh, it will inform you. Uh, and uh, edify you so that uh, we will come to understand what the Lord wants us uh, to do with our lives. The title of my lesson today is Some Ways to Draw Near to God. You know, perspective in life really, really matters. And, you know, each day, is an adventure of its own in our lives. And so as we think of this, what we want to do is to think of what our first love is. This morning's lesson was about things that we are to love. And so this may dovetail a little bit off of this morning's lesson. What is your first love? Ideally, the answer, and the answer this morning in the lesson, is God. And so what are some ways that we can draw near to God? Well, let's remember, our God is so important to us. In Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21, Jesus states, don't store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. God is our treasure and he must be first in our lives. So how do we draw near to God? Well, I would maintain first that we look at Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2 that says, Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. We must set aside times in our life that we are to pray. You know, in this world, uh, as the world has ever shrunk, um, we are able to stay closer to people than we ever were through the old fashioned way, uh, verbally talking to them, uh, even through as we talk to people, our body language, uh, we can use the telephone, we can text. And finally, there is that 
<laughs> dastardly sometimes social media where people connect with one another constantly. However, all these things aside, there is only one way to communicate with our God, and that is through prayer. Uh, we need to find that time for prayer. And I would maintain that finding time to prayer is a twofold thing. First is to recognize that we need to pray. We can't help to develop an intimacy and an understanding of God without talking to him. He is our God and he desires that we talk with him. Similarly, uh, if we truly believe God to be what he is, uh, the uh, omnipresent one, then uh, he's not always available. He's not only available just when life is good. He's available when we have the pratfalls of life and things happen to us that we don't want to happen. Secondly, we should set aside a designated time to pray. It could be at night before we go to sleep. It could be in the morning after we wake up. We could choose to be both. Uh, the when is not as important as much as the doing is. And instead, the key to doing something small and realistic, prayer, can become a habit and a very, very good habit. Second on my list of uh, ways to draw near to God is to make a gratitude list. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You can make this either a physical list or a mental list, but take time and pause to reflect on the things that happen daily in our lives. Scripture doesn't tell us to be grateful for everything that happens. But it tells us to be grateful in everything that happens. When we take time to reflect over the things that are happening in our lives, we gain a greater, I believe, perspective of how God is working in our lives and in the lives of others. We remember to to learn more of his word. Remember how much he loves us and each one of us. And as a result, we trust him more and we trust him with a closeness. Third, make the reading of God's word a priority in our lives. That wonderful scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that says all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. Much like prayer, we could get off to bad habits and not pray that we should the way we should. By that same token, we should take our Bible reading in the same way. Um, the reality is, uh, the more we read God's word, the more we find its importance. And so scripture help us, helps us to judge the things in our lives that are right against the things that are wrong. And it helps us to understand in some measures, the mind of God, because these are Holy Spirit inspired verses. Without taking the time to understand God through his word, there's no time for us to grow close to him. Next on my list is to find community. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 to 10, it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if one falls, his companion can lift him up but pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. 
You know, we have to acknowledge that there are people out there that are lonely because they don't find community. They don't find people that they can trust. They don't find people that uh, can be a part of their lives and help to lift them when they fall. Strive to be a person who wants to serve and seeks to serve, not just to be served. And the type who listens more than he speaks. That's what community is all about. It's listening. We find ourselves in a community with other believers. And there is reciprocity here. The, the godly love that we show reflects on others and will naturally find ourselves encouraged. That's what Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 is all about. Let us encourage one another on toward love and good deeds. On my list is connecting with the church. And I mean connecting. Connecting means being a part of. And in our church, we need to be a part of that church. We don't need to be just a pew sitter. We need to be a doer. We need to be a servant. We need to find out how we can help, how we can, in our capacity, capacity with the talents that we had been given, to utilize those talents for the better, uh, betterment of the church. That's part of what the parable of the talents is all about, is giving back to the Lord and giving back to him richly through his kingdom. Next is to fight past sin. In John chapter 8, verse 11, Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. If we want to draw, draw closer to God, we need to be a better person tomorrow than we were today. And so with that, we need to have a mindset shift. <laughs> we need to shift from a sinful life to a purer life. Um, we need to um, understand that if we don't do that, we separate us ourselves from God. You see, what Jesus did on the cross forgives us of our sins. That's what the blood of Jesus does. And so with that, we can't let our sins weigh on us. God offers us the opportunity for repentance. Not just saying that we're sorry for our sins, but saying that we don't want to do those things again. As Christians, we must realistically, if we want to draw closer to God, uh, we need to realistically set goals. Life is all about setting goals, isn't it? Life can happen to us or we can take charge of our lives. And if we are maturing in the Lord, we allow God to have input into the decisions that we make as we set these goals. We must see how God directs us and guides us in the fashion that he sees fit. We need to take our talents and use them for the Lord. Let's choose to make goals. The ultimate goal for each of us is to live forever with our Lord in eternity. We must be accountable. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 says, Iron sharpens iron. One person sharpens another person. No matter what we say we're going to do, if we go through life just relying on ourselves, we wouldn't need help. If we try to go through life without God's input in our lives, our lives, our lives are going to be wasted. Um, we wouldn't need people. We wouldn't need God. But the reality is that we need people and we need God. Find people in your lives that will hold you accountable as you strive to grow. 
You know, Timothy was told that the Holy Scriptures were for reproof and rebuke. Uh, this is what people uh, need to do for one another. We need to hold one another accountable. Finally, last on my list in growing closer to God is to, to discover your purpose. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this boldly. It says, but it says, you will seek him. I'm sorry. Let me restart that again so I get it right. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. The only way that God can be in our lives if we, is if we diligently search him with every fiber of our being. You know, life is made up of two things. It's praying and doing. Prayer helps us to know to get God and his plans for our life and doing what he wants us to do in our life. That completes our purpose. Um, to use our skills, to use our gifts, and to discern how to use those gifts and skills. You know, it's like the Lord says to us, you know, uh, we need to live with surety and purpose. Know that your entire life will be about this. Tomorrow has to be a better day than today. Next year, as we draw near to the end of 2023, has to be a better year, uh, 2024, than this year was. God says that we can find him. And if we feel like we have been trying, note that he doesn't say when. God says to us, you will find me. That is our purpose. You know, as we close, perspective is uh, something that we need to look at in our lives, other people, ourselves, and God. We need to discover all the ways in our lives that make us draw closer to God, setting a time for prayer, making a gratitude list, making reading God's word a priority, finding community, connecting with the church, fighting past sin, setting goals, being accountable, and discovering your purpose. This is what the Christian life is all about. If you haven't become a child of God, it would be very difficult for you to draw close to God as this lesson uh, it hopefully imparts to us. And so if you haven't heard the word of God and believed it, if you haven't confessed Jesus as the son of God and been baptized for the remission of your sins, that is our invitation for you this evening. If you need to come to the Lord to uh, be baptized uh, into the Lord, we invite you this evening. If you need to do it immediately, get in touch with one of us and we will certainly be there to help you. Let's close in prayer. Our God and Father, we're grateful for your being in our life and help us that every day we will attempt to draw closer to you. You've given us all the avenues to draw closer to you. And help us to use those avenues so that as we draw closer, that we can become the godly people and your servants that we're supposed to be. Continue to be with us each day of our lives because we need you, we need your blessings, and we need your comfort. Keep us close to you. Help us to keep that on our hearts constantly. Be with us and bless us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and have a...